Hello! Wow, it has been a while since I've recorded one of these videos. After a semi-hiatus thing, after doing our 100 days of making comics, we're back, we're slowly working on figuring out our video schedule, and today I'm coming at you with some mistakes that I see lots of beginner comic artists do. Um, I have done all of these, FYI. Anything I talk about, it's probably because I did it when I was younger or when I started in comics, and I have since learned not to do it. So I'm here to share with you things to avoid, to have a smoother time than I did. I've done a few other videos about beginner mistakes. We'll put a link to them somewhere here, probably. I don't know, maybe? You can go check them out if you're interested. But here we go. What are some things that you just shouldn't do? So number one, it's important to remember that comics are not animation and they're not novels. This seems obvious, considering that, for the most part, most comics you're going to work on probably aren't animated, though there are animated comics, e.g. Homestuck and Ava's Demon and lots of other lovely comics, but they're still a different medium entirely than, say, an animated show or movie. And, obviously, they're not novels. They've lots of pictures and a lot less words than novels do, but they're still very different than novels. So the mistakes that I see along these lines are when I see a script written by someone who's started in novels or short stories or prose, I guess, and moves into comics, they add a lot of text. Comics are an interesting medium because they are a balance between text so dialogue, for the most part, are captions. Obviously, there are words involved in a comic, um, but there's also visuals to help aid you, where when you're working with prose, you only have your words. That's it. And you craft all your visuals through the words. So the mistake I see with a lot of people who start out writing prose is that they will not only show you what they're trying to say with their visuals, they will also say it within the text. When you don't need to do that, um, unless that's like your intention is to show it twice through text and through visuals, then it's useless. You're, you're just, <laughs> you're overwriting it. You don't need to show and tell at the same time. You can do one or the other. <laughs> um, so I'd highly recommend if you are someone who is starting with prose, um, when you tackle your first uh, comic or graphic novel, read it over and make sure that you're not just reiterating things or saying the same thing over and over again. Um, you know, showing with your visuals um, is, it's a really important tool in your comic toolbox where there's lots of stuff you don't have to say at all because it's all shown within the subtext of the visuals. So there you go. Watch out for that. And from the other side, if you're someone who's coming from studying animation or even studying film, comics are a very different medium than film. Now, don't get me wrong, I learned a lot about how to make really nice compositions through film um, and watching animation. There's lots of things you can transfer over. However, with animation, because it is in motion, your compositions are set up in a way where the focus will more often than not beyond the moving characters, let's say. Obviously, there's like backgrounds and stuff that you want to focus on, but there's usually just focus on one thing because it's really hard to watch two moving things happen and all at once uh, when you're watching a movie. That would just be confusing and visually cluttered. With a comic, people are staring at a still image for a long time. You can put lots of intricate details into the background. You can put lots of implied motion all over the place. You can have multiple actions happening in one panel because people will take the time to just sit and read it and stare at it. You don't have to stick one action within one panel. Um, and it's a, it's a common thing I see in a lot of beginning artists where they add too many panels and they treat it kind of like you would a storyboard for an animation. And for the most part, you can condense a lot of things down into one panel. And just have lots of stuff going on because they're going to have lots of time to look at it. It's not flashing by in a few seconds. So take the time to build out your compositions, study actual comic books instead of just focusing on the prose side and the animation side that you're coming from, and really understand what comics are, are all about. If you would like to learn more about that, we have many more videos about comics and how to make them, so you can go check out our channel. Make sure to subscribe. We always have more stuff coming out. Heck yeah, comics are great. Study up, fam. So number two, if you are an artist, 
and you're getting into comics because you're a fan of comics or whatever, whatever's driving you, but you've never written anything. If you've only done art and you want to start a comic, it's very important that you go and you study your writing fundamentals. That, that may seem boring and it honestly, it can be very hard to find um, resources about writing for comics. Um, however, Bones has many videos on it here, but I highly recommend looking into the fundamentals of like how to write a scene, how to write dialogue, plot structure, very basic fundamental things that are kind of overarching across, you know, books or film or comics. I would highly recommend looking into it and make sure that you take the time to write your whole script out before you start drawing so that you know, as you're learning how to write, because you can learn how to write and how to draw as you're making your first comic, make sure that you're not going to write yourself into a corner and it's already going to be published and you're going to be kicking yourself years down the line. So study up on your writing if you are an artist um, who is new to it. Get those fundamentals down before you dive in head first. And the same goes for if you are I guess the same goes for if you're a writer and you're looking into art. Definitely study up on your art fundamentals. I find it less often where there is a writer who's going into comics who's never touched art before. I find usually they tend to go searching for an artist to work with. In which case, if you are a writer who knows nothing about art and you're working with an artist, I would recommend studying up on the fundamentals all the same just so that you can help give direction to your artist so that if you're looking at a panel and it looks weird, you have the language to describe why you feel that way about it so that you're not just telling them like, I don't know, fix it because that's not very helpful. But if you know the basics of like composition, comic flow, um, color theory, you can really help facilitate your artist to make sure that they're putting out the best art that they can that follows your script really nicely and complements it. So no matter where you're starting, make sure that you study up on the other half of comics, <laughs> you know. If you're not sure where to look, like I said, I've, 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 as I've said a million times here, we do have lots of video resources, but I'd also recommend looking at resources about writing prose and resources about, say, like film theory or animation or general art theory. Um, they can get you a long way. They might lead you in some wrong directions, like I said, because comics are not film nor a novel. But it's a good starting point and there's much more resources about them, I find, than there is about comics. So if you're not sure where to start, check out all that good stuff. So number three, another common mistake, and I mention this all the time because it's so important and I see it everywhere. Make sure that your comic is legible and I can read it. Study up on good typography practices. Make sure that your kerning and your letting are nicely spaced. It's very frustrating to read, well to try to read a comic, where all of the letters are squished together horizontally and vertically so it just looks like a little big gobbled glob of text and you can't read it. That can be really frustrating for anyone, but it's extra frustrating for someone who might be learning a new language. Maybe, you know, if you're writing in English, someone who English is their second language, it can be really hard to read and really frustrating. People with dyslexia can have a lot of trouble reading a comic where the typography is very messy and, you know, hard to read. Um... And, you know, nothing's going to make someone put down a comic faster than if they can't read it and they can't understand what's going on because you got your letters all squished together. Also, make sure that your, your letters have lots of padding around them within the speech bubble, meaning give just a little extra space around between the words and the border of your speech bubble. Don't let your letters run over the sides of your speech bubble. It drives me crazy when people do that and they try to fix it by just putting like an outline around the letters. It's like, just make the speech bubble bigger, please. It really helps with being able to read it. Make sure that you have good contrast on your typography um, so that I don't have to squint to tell it apart from the either, you know, the background it's on or the speech bubble it's on. Get it as close to black on white as you can or white on black, um, even if you are using colors. Just make sure it's got really high contrast so I can actually read it and understand what's going on. Please, work on your typography. Also, don't use tiny little fonts that I can't make out and I have to zoom in really far. It's really frustrating. 
it's better to just go bigger with your text. Especially because a lot of people will be reading it on their phones, which are already a smaller screen. And I admittedly, I do accept, like, I'll zoom in more when I'm on my phone than when I'm on my desktop. But still, make it, make it as accessible to anyone as possible. That's, like, best practice right there. You'll get so many more readers if everyone can read it. Number four, I see a lot of you young artists working so hard that you burn out. So don't do that. Now, it can be hard when you're first beginning to work on comics as you figure out how much work you can manage and figuring out your rhythm of work. But what I see a lot of people do is being really hard on themselves to put out a million comic pages and they won't sleep and will work until their back is broken because they've been sitting at a desk forever. They'll work till they have carpal tunnel and sore wrists and... They have a mental breakdown and they start saying things like, I used to be passionate about art, but now I don't do any artwork for fun and I hate comics. Like, it just breaks my heart when I see stuff like that. And I've been there. I have slowly been learning to love comics again. I mean, I was a while ago. I'm a lot better now and now I love comics again. But there was a time in my life where I worked myself so hard. And admittedly, I got a lot of pages done, but a lot of them weren't very good because I didn't put any passion into it. I was tired all the time. My output was so fast that there wasn't any quality to what I was working on. There wasn't any, you know, editing and checking for errors. It was just like, bam, it's done, post it. And then I'd work on the next page and not sleep. So make sure that you're taking care of your, your mental well-being Make sure that you're taking lots of breaks to relax. Um, don't beat yourself up if, you know, you miss a deadline or you need to extend a deadline. Don't beat yourself up if you decide randomly that you're not working fast enough, despite the fact you're working as much as you normally do. That's a really silly mental trap that is easy to get into. Don't break your body. Make sure to do lots of stretching. Go for walks. Go outside. Um, if that's something you are able to do, definitely take that opportunity and get lots of sleep because your art will be better if you have a healthy brain that gets lots of rest. Um, and if you're ever feeling really frustrated with something you're working on, sometimes sleeping can really help because whatever problem you're running into, your brain will work at as you sleep um, and it'll be better in the morning. And along the same lines, if you're someone who right now is in school or you're working on a day job, um, or, you know, you have lots of other life obligations that are very important, I would recommend focusing on those before focusing super hard on your comic. At least don't beat yourself up if you're busy with school and you don't get a chance to work on your comic until, like, the weekends or something, because that's totally reasonable and you should focus on whatever, you know, if you're working, focus on what's bringing in uh, lots of money so you can pay your bills. And if you're in school, especially if you're paying for school, focus on that and get the most out of it that you can. And I totally recommend working on comics on the side, especially if you're really passionate about it and it's really fun. Um, but take care of yourself. You can only do as much as you can do. You, you know, if you're working full-time, don't expect yourself to get another eight hours of comic work done on top of that. That's just silly. So yeah, take care of yourself. Don't work yourself until you burn out. And number five, another mistake that, I guess this last one isn't really a mistake. I think it's just like a fact you should be aware of going into comics. Actually, no. Okay, let me rephrase this. The mistake I see is that a lot of people do not want to start their comic. They find every excuse they can to not start. They always say like, oh man, I want to write a comic. I want to draw a comic. I want to post something. I want to be a comic maker. And then they never start. They sit there agonizing over their characters or over their plot or they don't finish any pages or they make pages and then they scrap them because they hate them and they never finish it. And that is a silly mistake because you're just getting in your own way. It's very important to know that your first comic, no matter how hard you work on it, is always going to be kind of cruddy. Because it's your first one, you're still learning things and it's really important to make your first comic and put it out there, even if it's just to your friends. Um, you maybe don't publish it to the World Wide Web if you really are not feeling it. But 
make sure that you finish it, complete the project, get out of your own way. That is the biggest mistake I will ever see is when people just stand in their way and they never make their comic and they're always sad about it. <laughs> and I do that to myself all the time. I, I used to do it with comics before I started working with Bones. I do it with other creative projects where I just sit in my own way and then, and it's not good. It's not healthy for your brain. So get out of your own way and start working on your comics. And it's also a very important thing to remember. Now this may sound scary, <laughs> but it is true. As you age, you your work will slow down. So when you start out making your comics, I recommend working fast. Don't worry too hard about making it a perfect masterpiece with every page, but start your comic, keep working at it, finish the project, and start right now while you're young. And that could mean like when you're 30, honestly. You know, young is relative, but don't wait because with age, you will slow down. I used to produce way more comics when I was 17 than I do now. And part of that sure is because now I work full time um, and I have way more responsibilities than I did when I was in my last year of high school. But, you know, stuff like that's going to get in your way. Also, your body will slow down as you age. So, you know, seize the day and get the most out of what you can. Um, again, work in moderation. Don't overwork yourself. But don't sit around never doing it. Just try your best and have fun because comics are cool and fun. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you believe that. So go make your comic happen. I believe in you. So there we go. That was my rambly beginner mistakes video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I've called you out thoroughly if you do all these things. And I, like I said, I wish you lots of luck on your comic. You can do it. I believe in you. If you're looking for cool friends to share your comic with, go check out our Discord. It is in a link in the description down below. Check out the Moonlight Kickstarter if that's still going. I'm sure it is right now. Yeah, it is right now. <laughs> go check it out if you like queer werewolves and comics because we have lots of those in that anthology. Again, link in the description. And make sure to subscribe if you want more cool comic videos. And hopefully we'll be posting more soon. So there you go. Thanks again. I'll see you guys next time or on a stream or something. I don't know. We'll see each other around. Goodbye.